So, have you ever wondered why some people manage to get out and do things and other people don't? Well, hi everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal. And I would ask you during the course of this video to keep an eye out on the trees. Because for those of you who live in areas where the trees are not changing colors, this is going to be interesting for you to watch. So, have you ever wondered why some people manage to get out and do things and other people don't? And I know that everybody thinks that it is because we're different. You know, it's okay for you because you don't have my anxiety or it's okay for you because da -da, whatever, you know, the reason is that we tell ourselves. But you know, I wonder whether it is because we have different conversations. When I say different conversations, Think about it. When you wake up in the morning, you probably look at the clock and make a little decision as to whether you're going to get out of bed or not. And depending on what the time is, is how you have that conversation. For example, I can wake up in the morning and see it's six o'clock and I go, yeah, I don't think so. And that's a conversation I have with my brain. Because the brain's going, do you want to get up now? And I'm thinking, it's six o'clock? I don't think so. And then I can wake up at eight o'clock and have that conversation now. In the days when I was working, that would be a very different conversation. It would be an all fill in the word conversation. I'm late. And by the way, that gives you the adrenaline to get up and go fast. But you see, the thing is this, if we are, oh, I think we've got some pretty trees coming up over there any minute now. Can you see them all? Ah, it's that pretty. Anyway. <laughs> so I was thinking about that today because now that I'm retired, you know, I don't have to get out of bed. Actually, I don't have to get out of bed. It's a choice. What amazes me is just how busy I have been since I got into retirement. And I don't know why my, my sense had been that I would not be that busy. Well, duh, I'm a busy sort of person, I, I guess. I'd love to tell you that I sit around all day doing diddly. It's not true. <laughs> so if I don't get up until 10, that's fine. But I'm probably going to be doing stuff until after midnight. <laughs> you understand? It's, it's, I'm still going to be doing stuff. Okay, so here's the conversation. I woke up this morning. And I've got this new pattern that I do, because I can, which is I wake up, and this morning I woke up at 6 o'clock and decided, no, I don't want to get up yet. But then I woke up at half past 8, and I thought, okay, fine, that's time to get up now. So I got out of bed, and I struggled, threw it to the kitchen, made my latte, and went straight to the computer because that's my new pattern. Now, I could have gone straight back to bed, actually. You had nothing to stop me doing that. But I know if I go and get the coffee and go back to bed, I, I won't wake up again until 11. So that doesn't work for me. So anyway, and I'm busy. I spend normally about an hour just checking emails and responding or checking whatever I can. That That's what I do. I do a little bit of research. 
and basically it's just getting my brain going. Now, it's Thursday, and for some of you, you know, Thursday is my new get-out day. And I say my new one because since I've been retired, you know, I've tried to make sure that once a week I get out and I do something. Now, it won't always be a Thursday because if it's bitterly cold, nasty weather, you know, or absolutely torrential rain or whatever it is that's going to make it really uncomfortable for me then I you know will change it around but it is Thursday and it's an overcast day but it's not a nasty day it's 10 degrees Celsius which would make it 50 degrees Fahrenheit so you know a pleasant day <laughs> And for Leslie, if she happens to be watching this summer in Glasgow, you know, um, <laughs> we always have this joke. Anyway, so I'm busy getting dressed after I've done my wake up stuff, uh, which is normally, <laughs> let me try and describe this to you. So, so when my first cup of coffee runs out, that normally takes about an hour. And by then, I need another cup of coffee, obviously. But that gets me off the computer and doing something else. Now, you understand that my brain starts saying to me, it's Thursday, you need to get up and at them because you're going out on a field trip. Then the voice in my head starts, well, you know, it looks a bit overcast today, and I'm going, don't go there. I'm really not interested. It's Thursday, I'm going on a field trip. Yeah, but you know, Sal, no, I'm, I'm going on a field trip. And do you understand, all the time, I'm making the choice to counteract what's going on in my head. easy is it for me to say you know you're right it does look like a pretty dismal sort of day it probably is going to rain you know why would I do that to myself so what I am wondering and I would ask those of you who've had anxiety and recovered from it What I'm wondering is part of the reason that we actually are people who don't suffer as much, because I think we all suffer from anxiety now and then, it's perfectly normal, but I think those who don't suffer as much have different conversations. Now, as some of you know, who've been watching me for a while, you know, I call that voice in my head Gertrude. And I like to believe that Gertrude's intent is to protect me in some way. It doesn't want me to get cold or sick or whatever. Yeah, you know, I like to think that's really where her motivation is. But you know, if I don't... Ooh, lots of water in the river today. If I don't talk to her as a grown-up, and say, it's okay, you know, I can wear a coat, or, which I have got with me, by the way, then I'm not really helping myself. So the challenge is, and I would challenge you all, uh, regardless of the level of anxiety that you feel, is can you just think about this? Can you think about how many times in a day, even, you have a good intent, oh, I think I'll go and do the accounts, or I think I will go and clean up that room, or, difficult for me, watch the body language, um, <laughs> I think I should go out and exercise, yes, um, and then almost immediately, what's the next thought?
the next thought is what determines how productive you will be, how good a friend you're going to be, how good whatever. Because if you think about it, oh, you know, it's Wednesday, you know, I meant to go and visit Jane, let's say. And then the voice in your head goes, yeah, but you know, you're not feeling quite as good as you should. All right. So then you probably email Jane and say, I'm really sorry, I'm not feeling well. Can we do a rain check? But I've got to ask you, when you do that, how do you feel? So do you understand that at every level of every day, our choices, our discussions that we're having, those conversations we're having in our head determine how happy we will be, how productive we're going to be, how anxious we're going to be, how alone we're going to be. And I know it's a tough one. It's a really tough one to understand. And I didn't get it for most of my life, I want to tell you something, that I was creating my own health. So what I try to do now is to have better control. And it is that, really. It, it's, you know, it's better control of your life. So when I try and link things to days, you know, if it's Monday, this is what I, my number one priority is. If this is Tuesday, this is my number one priority. So think about it, if you will. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, bye bye for now. Thank you.